webinar will be recorded and will be made available on our website channel, our website and YouTube channel at a later date. However, all names and faces will be blurred to maintain everyone's privacy. And so welcome everyone to the Being a English and Creative Writing Student webinar hosted by the Student Recruitment and Outreach team here at University of Chichester. I'm Tom, I work with Outreach and Admissions here at Chichester and supporting the session is one of my colleagues, Gabby, who is also from Outreach. We also have a couple of our student ambassadors with us today from this subject area and we'll be going through some slides with them to hear more about their experiences so far uh, with their degrees and also just student life in general here at Chichester. Um, and so these are some of the courses that we offer in creative writing and English. So we offer quite a few English uh, creative writing courses that are also combined with uh, another subject area. And we also have a couple English literature and uh, degrees as well. And so to our student ambassadors, um, if you'd like to uh, just introduce yourselves quickly with your name, uh, which course you're studying and also uh, which year you're currently on as well. So Deborah, if, you, if you'd like to go first. Yep, um, my name is Deborah and I'm a first year creative writing single honours student. Brilliant. And uh, Amelia? Yeah, uh, I'm Amelia and I'm a second year English literature student. Brilliant. So uh, on to our first slide. So uh, for those who are watching this webinar, they might be interested to uh, hear about how the application process was for you two before you joined as thus the sort of like stage that they'll be at themselves. And so was there uh, any steps that you took before joining? So did you go to a lot of open days or were you sort of quite casual about how you applied? Uh, Amelia, if, if we'd like to go to you first. Yeah, so I went to quite a few different open days, um, but I knew sort of the geographic area that I wanted to look at. Um, and then I honed in specifically looking at courses and like the content on the courses. Um, and then, yeah, I applied through UCAS to five different unis. Um, I had my offers and I also had an interview at Chichester um, to discuss the option of an unconditional offer, like talking through my personal statement. And then I got an unconditional offer. And Deborah. What was it like for yourself? Was it a similar sort of process you went through? Um, well, actually, I was looking at courses specifically that I was interested in across the country. Um, and so I was very, very torn between Chichester and Aberystwyth in the end, and I ended up choosing Chichester for the course. Um, but I didn't end up going to many open days because of the country situation with the pandemic. And so it was a lot of, of online things and uh, I had a call with one of the lecturers, which was really helpful as well. Um, and I sent exchanged lots of emails to see how I would be supported with the university. And uh, I, of course, communicated via Facebook on the applicant page. Fantastic. And so um, how were you feeling sort of before you started your degree? Were you uh, were you quite nervous or was it were you quite like looking forward to it and Excited to begin, uh, Deborah. If we stick with you for the next one. Yeah, I was really nervous, mostly about making friends, and I think the um, sort of uh, you know accommodation side of it and and friends side of it. But my course, I was very excited for and excited to start. Brilliant. And Amelia, uh, how were you feeling before you began? Were you, were you a bit nervous as well? Yeah, I think I was um, I was mostly again like nervous for the social life and everything, not so much the course. Um, I think I was super excited to study just the one subject that I was passionate about in like more detail um, than we were ever offered at school. So it was mostly excitement, I think, more than nerves. Fantastic. And so having gone through the application process yourselves, do you have any tips for those who might be watching and, and going through it themselves at home. Um, Amelia, if we sort of begin with you. Um, I think definitely looking at the courses in detail, like looking at the modules that they offer just for 
um, what you're going to be interested in because obviously it's the next three years of your life you want to be constantly engaged like don't just look at first year um, and then think about your personal statement like spend time writing on it and really show your interests and your passions and make sure I would always recommend to visit the city or wherever you're looking to go before you apply just so that you know if you love it there not just the uni because I think that like the life of the city is really important to how you're going to be on a day-to-day -day basis. And Deborah if we come to you uh, do you have any advice for those who are applying for university right now? Yeah I mean I would say almost the same thing I uh, definitely think choose based on based on your course and whether you're going to like the course because I even though I was so worried about making friends I think really you can make friends anywhere you know don't get so caught up in wanting to make friends before you get there because when you do in freshers week and stuff it will just happen naturally and so just focus on being comfortable with the lecturers and being comfortable um, with uh, what you're going to be studying that would be my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And so, yeah, just to reiterate, uh, these are some of the top tips that we've had from students previously about uh, before they began university. So pretty much all of these we've sort of touched upon uh, with yourselves. So like visiting universities, coming to open days, booking campus tours, uh, visiting the local area beforehand, um, and also you making use of things like UniBuddy, where uh, our applicants are free to ask questions to our some of our current student ambassadors. Um, and so, yeah, as we move on, so uh, as you were getting started in your degrees, um, would you like to sort of uh, explain what the first week was like for yourselves? Um, Amelia, if we come to you first. Yeah, so uh, my first week was, um, yeah, like freshers week, so we didn't have any official academic classes as such. We just had like tasters. Um, we did actually a walking tour of Chichester with one of my lecturers. Um, we had a lecture about Harry Potter, which was really cool, just to sort of get a taster of what it would be like, like what sitting in a classroom would be like, meet um, our course mates. And then we did make effort to sort of go for lunch in between and that kind of thing to get to know each other even more. And uh, just generally, what was it like settling in during your first week? Did you find, uh, because in Freshers Week, there's a lot of different events on at university, sort of lots of opportunities for our first year students to meet other people, like not just on the same course as themselves. So um, yeah, how, how was it for you when you were settling in, Amelia? I think because I started obviously um, what was in the height of COVID. I didn't have as many social um, activities as they had this year at Freshers and obviously they would have had before COVID. Um, but there was still opportunity like living in halls. Um, we made effort to have dinner with like with all of my flatmates, like as each person, we all moved in on different days, but as we all moved in, um, as each new person came, we would all sit and make effort to have dinner together. And then um, everyone sort of would end up knowing someone that was on their course throughout the hall so we gradually got to be introduced to more and more people um, and then there were a few activities that were like low-key that you could go to but there were obviously there wasn't any like SU events or anything because it was Covid but I still would get the opportunity to like socialise with my flatmates and then a few people outside of that too. That's great and Deborah if we come to you what was uh, what was your first week like um, and how was it for you settling in as well? My first week was so busy and my <laughs> number count of, of how many steps I'd walked was absolutely off the charts. <laughs> so I did also go on a walk with my course, but then I also went on two other walks around the town. So I went on the ghost tour and I went on the history tour. And then of course I went on the course tour as well. And so I got to see the town from loads of different angles and, and see a bunch of different things. I signed up for everything that was during the day because I'm not really a, a night person. So I went to all of the um, like random psychology lectures that I could sign up for. It was it was great. I enjoyed it, and I and I got to meet quite a lot of new people. Not all I'm still in touch with, but some of them were on my course, and I'm still best friends with. Um, and and it's yeah, it's, it's re it was really good. It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, and so. Um... 
what does a typical sort of like uh, week look like for you two on your courses? Uh, so how many days are you in uh, for like lectures or seminars? And also if you could talk about um, like your class sizes, like are they quite small or is there always quite a few of you in your classes? Uh, Deborah, if we come to you first. Yeah, so um, I started uh, last semester. I have some classes that are bigger and some that are smaller because of the joint. Um, so last semester I had one with all the English literature students, all the creative writing students, and of course all the creative writing and English literature joint students. And then, so that one was about, I think, 30 of us in the class. And that's the biggest class that I've been in. And then my smallest class is, I think, 12 of us at the moment. Um, so that they're they're quite small classes, which is really good because they can they can be engaging. But then it's also not so small that all the focus is on you and there's so much pressure to answer the questions, you know. So I, I think it's quite a good balance, or at least it is for me. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have three days a week that I go in for lectures and it was the same last semester. Uh, so currently I have uh, two on a Tuesday, one on a Wednesday and then one more on a Friday. Uh, so it's quite it's quite nicely spaced out. Fantastic. And so Amelia, if we come to you next, um, is it the same sort of thing where it's your class sizes depend on the modules that you're doing or um, uh, and then also like how many days are you in as well? Is it the same sort of situation? Yeah, so pretty similar. I think um, because I'm on just English literature will have modules I think that are only available to English literature students those classes are always smaller um, so my smallest class I think there's six of us um, and that's if everyone turns up um, so and then my biggest class I've never had a class as big as 30 I think probably like 20 25 um, would be my biggest um, and yeah the same sort of pattern because we do four modules per semester and then it's um, normally one class a week per module um, there'll be two hour classes um, and it's usually a lecture for the first hour and then a seminar for the second hour but that's dependent on the lecturer because some like um, us to do the lectures online and then we have a two hour seminar so two hours of just discussion which is really good um, but also this semester I'm taking a work placement module so it means that I only have three classes a week and then I've got my work placement um, in my spare time so that means um, I'm in on Tuesday Wednesday and Friday um, with two hour classes each day. Fantastic um... And so as we move on to the next slide, so uh, again, sort of before you were uh, coming to university here, did you have uh, any major concerns or things that um, you were particularly worried about? So it could be about exams or just the, the situation of like moving away from home. Um, Emilio, if we come to you first, if that's OK. Yeah, so I think naturally I was worried about moving away, but I had also seen my older sister do it, so I knew that it was like going to be OK um, and also quite excited to have a little bit of freedom. Um, I was I did have financial like worries. My student loan was quite low in first year, um, basically just covered my rent. So I was looking for um, employment, which was a bit stressful, but I have it all sorted out now. I think it did take like probably first semester to just like iron out some of the worries like it was a bit up and down with homesickness and making proper friends and settling into living with friends as well which is obviously like nothing I'd experienced before um, and then yeah just sort of finding work and budgeting and that kind of thing it did take a little while to get into it but then it all smoothed out and it, it went really well. That's great thank you uh, and so Deborah if we come to you uh, did you have anything that you were particularly concerned about before you began your degree as well? Um, just the things I've already mentioned, I think making friends, I, I was really concerned that I'd get here and that I'd not feel very comfortable here. And like, I'd always have to, um, you know, be like my best self when I woke up in the morning because there'd be everyone in the kitchen, but it, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, you, you do um, settle in quite quickly in, in the first week with flatmates and get into a sort of routine that doesn't feel like you're constantly having to to be high energy that might just be me being an introvert but yeah <laughs> yeah I was concerned about that and it turned out to be all right <laughs> <laughs> that's great and so 
uh, as we sort of touched upon a fair a bit uh, already, uh, moving away from home is uh, quite a big step. So for quite a few students, university is like the first time they move away from home. And so if we'd like to just touch upon like how you both felt uh, moving away from home and also your thoughts on uh, what's been like living in student accommodation for your first year. Um, Deborah, if, if you'd like me maybe to uh, go first on this one. Yeah, so I actually had a gap year experience, so I had a little bit of experience with not being at home, although I was quite close to home. Um, so I wasn't so concerned about living apart from my parents. I think the um, it kind of got a bit harder when uh, they started, my family started going through some personal things and I was away and, and that was when it was a bit harder on me. Um, but yeah, student accommodation has been not as bad as I thought. <laughs> um, I, I won't say there's no problems because I'm not a fan of the push showers. So, so you know how usually you, have, you turn the tap, but now I have to like push it and keep pushing it. And that's a little <laughs> bit annoying, but no, other than that, no, it's, it's not bad at all. You know, they're, they're very spacious rooms. I got quite a comfortable mattress. I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Amelia, if we come to you, uh, how have you felt uh, about moving away from home for university and, uh, uh, and any thoughts about your experience with student accommodation f so far in your first year? Yeah, so um, I was definitely really nervous. Um, I think because I didn't do a gap year or anything, so I hadn't lived away from home before and really close to my family. Um, and it's about a three hour journey to get home, so it's not like super close by. Um, so I, I was nervous about it, but I was also really excited to like get independence because I'm from the countryside um, and you can't like get anywhere without a car. So I was really, really excited to be able to just like walk to see my friends and like walk up the road to the shops and walk to the pub and like be able to kind of stumble back from the pub and that kind of thing, um, which took away, I think, a lot of the nerves, just made me really excited to experience this new kind of freedom. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that. And then, yeah, I lived in, in Stockbridge Halls as well for my first year. Um, and I really liked them. I was I thought I was really lucky with my flatmates. Um, I still live with one of them now for second year. Um, and one of my other flatmates is my absolute best friend, even though we live apart this year. Um, so it was just a really great space to make friends outside of English literature because my course is small, so there wasn't loads of options, <laughs> like loads of friends on my course. So this really, well, they really widened my um, my circles living in halls. And yeah, um, again, like it wasn't it wasn't ideal. It wasn't always beautiful and clean, but it, it was it did the job, and I was really happy there. Fantastic. And so uh, before you began university, were you able to sort of uh, chat with uh, any people from your courses or in accommodation, uh, either on uh, like the Facebook applicant groups before you moved in? Uh, Deborah, if we come to you first. Yeah, so I met up with, I did both. Uh, I met them through the Chichester applicants page and then we set up a group chat for our course and then when the uh, flats came out and I knew what flat I was in I went on there and we managed to gather everyone together before we moved in uh, and so we created Snapchat group chats which we still communicate with um, and so yeah so I knew almost everybody um, before I, I came uh, I will say don't judge anybody based on their messages <laughs> because you can <laughs> decide who you like and who you don't like and as when you meet them in person they might be completely totally different so <laughs> you know don't get too um too uh I don't know close to people over a message you know wait till you meet them in person um but yes I was I was quite happy quite confident uh that I was going to be okay <laughs> after meeting them, which which was really helpful. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and Amelia, uh, were you able to do the same thing? Were you able to talk with uh, anyone from your course or uh, from your accommodation before you began? Yeah, pretty much the exact same. So I did like the generic post in the applicant groups and saying like, this is my course and this is my flat. Um, and we all found our way to each other. And because it was um, lockdown, whilst I was going through the application process and sort of waiting to come in September 2020, we had a lot of free time on our hands. So we did spend a lot of time messaging and 
Um, I agree with Deborah. Like the people that I was messaging during the summer weren't necessarily the same people that I became really good friends with, but it did allow us to like at least recognise each other's pictures and know who we're going to be living with and um, on courses with and look out for friendly faces around um, around campus and that kind of thing. Um, but I do remember one of the first things I did when we made our flat group chat on on Facebook Messenger, I said to them all, I can't help but feel we're all going to be absolute best friends and no one replied to me. Oh, no. <laughs> so that wasn't good. That was not great, but actually we did all become best friends. So um, I can oh, like, don't necessarily <laughs> judge it by the, the messages. Uh, and so if we move on to the next slide, so the social side of things is obviously quite a big part of university, but then the other side of it is so uh, like studying and assessments. And so um, if we'd like to sort of like talk about the types of assessments that you've been doing in your subjects so far, like have you been able to do, has there been quite a variety of different formats or has there been the same sort of like two or three that you've been doing so far? Um, Deborah, if we maybe come to you first. Yeah, so obviously uh, I'm doing creative writing, so the majority of mine is creative pieces. Um, however, we have to do like a percentage of it is creative and then we also have to do something that is considered an essay as well. So um, through the semester, I would gather my creative pieces together. We'd do it through workshopping, uh, which is where we all gather together and read through each other's work and give each other feedback. Um, and then I would decide which ones I wanted to hand in for this assignment and we'd have to write a commentary about it, which would be our essay piece, which is talking about our drafting process. Um, and that would be handed in um, online at the end of the semester. So usually within a week or two weeks, uh, we'd have all the assignments due. That's great. And uh, Amelia, if we come to you next, has it been the same sort of thing as Deborah's experience uh, with your assessments too? Yeah, so very similar. Um, obviously, doing English literature, we aren't doing creative pieces, um, but like critical analysis essays mostly. Um, so we have only done essays um, as of yet. There were previously, I think pre-COVID, um, sort of possibly presentations, um, like more group work. Um, and there was one exam, but I do believe that they're going through the process to um, change it all to essays now, um, sort of like in a post-COVID world. Um, it seems to be the preferred uh, form of assessment, which I really get on with. Um, but it's been pretty much one uh, essay per uh, module, which is four modules per semester. And um, same as Deborah, like all during at a similar time. Um, there were 2,500 word essays in first year, and then in second year, they move up to 3,500 word essays. Um, yeah. That's great. And so, so far, um, have you, uh, sort of come to find when you do your assessments have you found a particular process that works best for you in terms of in terms of preparation uh, Amelia if we come to you first yeah I think I'm still honestly still figuring it out even though I'm halfway through second year um, but I think it's all about like planning um, and I wasn't a very good planner when I first started writing the essays um, but yeah pretty much planning and there's always the option to send your plan to your lecturer as well which I think people don't utilize enough because they will look through it and kind of reconfigure it and let you know how you can improve um, and setting up a tutorial with each lecturer for each module before writing the essay just to sort of basically talk through any ideas they can point you in the right direction they can recommend texts from the library because they have so much knowledge about what books we have in the library that would be helpful or what um, critics to google online that would be helpful um, so really utilizing the resources is um, at hand like the lecturers has been the biggest help for me personally. That's great and Deborah if we come to you uh, would you like to tell us a bit about how you prepare for your assessments? Well I'm a very very organised person so I, I always think about it right from the start you know as soon as I'm given my modules pretty much I'm ready to to get working <laughs> on the assignment um, so I think my first step is always that I read the textbooks <laughs> uh, you wouldn't think there would be textbooks with creative writing, but no, we get even lots and lots of suggestions. And so I'll choose one or, or a couple that are relevant to my modules and they help me a lot with 
um, making sure that I'm making the changes I need for my creative work uh, to make it the best that it can be and also so that I can quote those in my commentaries because um, the commentary is really what I find is the hardest bit you know it's one thing to be a creative writer and to get to, to the, get that to the right level but it's an entirely different thing to write about your personal process of how you've made it as good as it is um, and so I like I said before I work on the creative pieces throughout the semester you know workshopping making uh, the changes that are needed um, and then I choose one that I think I've done the most work on so that's gone through the most drafts um, to then write my commentary about so that I have enough material to write about it um, and then I'll write the commentary in plenty of time so for example it's nearly Easter and I plan on having a first draft of all my commentaries done by the end of Easter so that I can start booking literary fund fellow meetings to go through my essays um, and, and just publish them up before I'm ready to hand them in. Fantastic and so um, Amelia touched upon it uh, just a bit before that typically uh, with assessments it'll be one assessment per module so where we typically it's four modules a semester that'll be four assessments but then um, Deborah, I was also wondering, have you also, where creative writing is more creative, have you done any modules that the like word count is maybe uh, split between one or two pieces? Yes, so uh, for my, I think the most common thing that I've had so far is that it's been, I see it varies so much because all my modules are so different. So I mean for poetry we have to give in five poems and then one commentary about one of those five poems. So that's a very different form, whereas for short fiction for example, which I'm doing a module introduction to short fiction at the moment, um, I have two pieces which need to amount to 1,800 words. And then I have a 750 word commentary on one of those pieces. So it's it's very, very, it does vary. And then I have a creative nonfiction module, which I have to write one 1,800 word piece and then a book review. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it really is just so different and the modules do vary a lot, but it's always laid out quite clearly at the beginning and then you, you'll know what it is and you'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, thank you very much. And so uh, as we move on, so here at the University of Chichester, we have a wide variety of student support services that we offer our students. Uh, these range from academic skills teams who can help with uh, essay writing or presentation skills to help with students assessments. Uh, and then we also have a, a range of health and wellbeing groups as well to provide that extra support to uh, any student who needs it as and when it might come up during their time with us. And so I'd just like to ask um, you both, have you had any experience with any of our uh, support services during your time or or even if you know of someone who's used them, um, if you'd like to just tell us uh, uh, what, you, what you know of them <laughs> from your own experience. Uh, Amelia, if we come to you first. Yep, so um, firstly with the student money service actually, um, last year, so when I was in first year um, and living in halls, they really helped me out by changing my um, rent payments because the way that my uh, student loan was divided was like not meeting the same as, as the rent payments. Um, so what I asked them to do was basically just match it up. So because my student loan was exactly the same as my rent payments, but in different installments, um, if they could just sort of like help me out and match it up so that I was just paying the same amount each time so that I wasn't going to be um, like out of loads of money in, in first semester and then a surplus of money at the end of second semester. Um, and they really easily sorted it out for me. I, I kind of panicked when I realised, um, but then I sent them an email and they sorted it out super quickly. So that was really helpful. And then as far as like wellbeing and stuff go, um, I receive um, disability allowance for my mental health. So that meant that I um, also get to work with a mentor, which has been really, really helpful, um, which was like weekly meetings. Um, and then on top of that, I unfortunately lost my dad in October, which means that I've had a lot of access to the wellbeing team. Um, there's a bereavement group and they are really constantly in touch because they, they know what's happened. So they're always checking in, um, which means, yeah, I've had a lot of contact with them, um, a lot more than I did last year. Um, but yeah, they've been really, really helpful and supportive through that, so. That's great, thank you, Amelia. Um, and Deborah, if we come to you, uh, have you had any 
uh, experience with our uh, support services? Yeah, so I'm not sure actually if the literary fund fellows do come into this. Are they, do they count as academic skills? Yeah, so I, I've gone to them a couple of times to help me structure my essays. I'm not very academically gifted. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to structuring essays and, and coming up with an argument, I just create a stuff I can do, essays I cannot. <laughs> but no, I, I, I managed it and, and I did okay in the end. And I feel like I've learned loads and loads of stuff from our meetings together. Um, I also have experience with the disability and sexier service. Um, I went to them with a concern and they gave me the options and, and I now have a form in place which uh, tells my lecturers what I need, which has been so, so helpful uh, just to, to give me that bit of extra support. And they sorted it out really, really quickly as well, which I was, I was really, really pleased about. Um, I haven't been using the wellbeing service as much. I, I went to them one time on one of their drop-ins because they do these drop-ins, I think, a few times a week. Um, but I, I'm registered with the DSA which is kind of separate to the university. So I receive mentoring online through that. <laughs> so, okay. um, but yeah, it, it's been a great thing to, uh, on top of the DSA to, to really help me while I'm at the university. That's great, thank you both. Um, and so is there anything that you would like to say to someone who's uh, watching this who are, and they're considering studying English and creative writing here at the University of Chichester? Uh, Deborah, if we come to you first. Yeah, well, I would say everyone's experiences are different, but personally, I love it here. <laughs> I'm so glad that I chose this town. Uh, like Amelia said, you know, everything's very close and you can just walk anywhere. And so to have things like the museum and the art gallery and the cathedral, and then there's Bishop Palace Gardens, which is a lovely place to sit. There's so many cafes to choose from. Because I'm in Stockbridge, I'm right next to McDonald's, Taco Bell, Cineworld, Domino's. Wait, did I say Domino's? I'm right next to everything. <laughs> like I could not be so more pleased. It's it's great, honestly. And I'm really enjoying my course. And uh, yes, love it. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, and Amelia, is there anything that you would say to someone that's uh, considering applying for English or creative writing here? Um, yeah, so as I um, mentioned earlier, like make sure to look at the course and like, look at the modules that we're offering just to make sure that your um, interest is in the right place and that we're going to sort of fulfil everything that um, you're interested in. Because obviously being a small university, um, module choices aren't as vast as some of the really big ones with like hundreds of students studying literature. Um, so yeah, just make sure to have a, a real proper look and make sure that you're going to be happy with the choices. Um, visit the town, yeah, come and have a look around and, and see what it has to offer. Um, and I would also say if you're sort of looking to um, fade away into the back of the classroom and like not sort of be recognised, then maybe don't come to Chichester um, because everyone is known um, like your your lecturers will kind of realise if you're not there and will contact you and make sure that you're okay and, and call you um, call you out about it basically if you're if you're not in class or um, if you're not engaging they are aware of it so um, make make sure that that's something that you're you're happy with uh, before you come basically. <laughs> that's great, thank you. Uh, and Can so I also just add another oh, thing, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah, I did course. also just want to add that there are lots of opportunities to meet people within the industry. So we've had loads of authors come to visit and there's I know that there's quite a few more that we have coming in second and third year as well. Um, and there's the opportunity to go to a publishing panel as well, where you get to meet people in the publishing industry, um, which is just a really great opportunity. So Chichester doesn't just confine itself to the university it also kind of goes out there and, and brings in other people and experts in the industry which is great if you want to become a creative writer and and break into that because it's really hard to get into otherwise <laughs> yeah that's great thank you uh and so yeah um as we've sort of touched upon these already during the webinar uh but we have a uh, unibuddy which is a messaging platform that applicants are able to use to be able to uh, message some of our student ambassadors directly. So that could be about anything ranging from uh, questions about courses and course content or student life here at Chichester. Uh, and there are also some uh, members of staff from some of our teams as well. If there's uh, any questions about admissions or um, some sort of like something more in depth about modules, uh, 
Unibuddy is a good way to get those questions answered. But then we also have Facebook applicant groups that our applicants are free to join. And these are a really good way for you to start to get to know the people in your course and also uh, sort of find out who you're going to be in accommodation with and start to forge those connections before you uh, move in in September. And so, yeah, as we're just about to wrap up, I've got uh, a couple of extra questions, if if that's all right. Um, and so, Deborah, uh, just before the session began, you mentioned to me quickly that uh, in second year you're going to go uh, abroad for some time of your second year. Uh, so, would you like to tell us a, a bit more about how that process um, came about, uh, or was it an opportunity that you had to? Uh, ask your de department directly or was it something that was mentioned earlier in in your first year yeah so in the first semester we had a little meeting about it uh, where one, one of the um, lecturers representing uh, English and creative writing came in to talk to us about the opportunities and he was actually uh, very set on us all going to Canada uh, but I was like no <laughs> I want to go somewhere cooler <laughs> so I looked at the form and one of the ones that was offering my course was the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland French-speaking Switzerland um, and the course is all in English uh, but it is a French-speaking country and so I committed to learning French and I am now at a solid A1 level <laughs> um, <laughs> so i will be going abroad for the next for semester next year um so i'll be leaving starting in september and then coming back after christmas which is really exciting and it's, it's gonna give me a lot more um opportunities to meet new people and to workshop my work with others and experience writing travel writing firsthand which i'm so excited about <laughs> that's great thank you uh and amelia where, where you're a second year student just wanted to ask you about um, how you found uh, the process of finding um, accommodation for your second year. So uh, are you on off campus accommodation or have you been able to sort of like stay on on campus for your second year? Um, so, yeah, I live in a rented um, student house, so they didn't offer um, second years or third years to stay in student accommodation. Um, this year, unless it was extenuating circumstances, I believe, um, just because they're the more and more intake of students, the less um, they have available and they want to offer it to first years, uh, which was yeah. fine by me because that's what we were um, looking to do anyway. So I live with um, yeah two of my course mates and one of my previous flatmates um, in a really lovely house. We found it through um, my student pad, which is the one that the university opens for us. Um, so it has all the lists of like um, university accredited um, properties. I, I don't know if that's sort of terminology, um, but yeah, we basically just scrolled through them, looked for um, four bedroom properties, highlighted the ones we liked, called the landlord, went to visit, simple as a, um, yeah, we've got really lovely landlords. They um, can't do enough for us, like if anything goes slightly wrong. Um, and yeah, they make sure like everything's up to scratch, which is which is really good. And do you have to commute in at all or are you still sort of like fairly close by to the, to the campus? Uh, yes, I'm actually closer than I was uh, in Stockbridge because obviously Stockbridge is quite far away. So yeah. I've gone from what the 20, 25 minute walk through town to um, 10 minute walk across um, Oaklands Park, which is so handy and um, massive change on on last year, especially on days like today when it's when it's raining. Um, yeah, so we walk in and it's a lovely walk and um, really easy to do. Fantastic. And my final question uh, that I'll ask both of you, uh, Deborah, if I come to you first, uh, what are you looking forward to most um, in your degree? Because as a first year, you've still got two years uh, of the course to go. So is there could be a particular module that you know you're going to be doing in like third year, for example, or uh, anything else that you're really looking forward to? Yeah, so I we are doing a historical fiction module in third year, which I'm so excited for. I've heard that Kate Moss is a visiting lecturer for the university and she's actually going to be teaching some of those, which I'm such a fan of Kate Moss. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, in fact, one of her uh, plays, uh, there's a play being made based on her book that's coming out in Chichester Festival Theatre, which I'm going to see soon. 
Um, but yes, I'm, I'm ex really excited for that. I'm really excited for looking at uh, longer pieces as well, because I'm a novelist. And so to look at opening novels, plotting novels is going to be great. And just meeting more people, honestly, you know, I, I'm, I want to be able to make these connections because this is really the time to, to do that and to get out there before I kind of jump into a career in the literary industry. And so just doing that would be great. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting started with that. Fantastic. And Amelia, as, as you're sort of in the second year, I guess it could go either way. Like, have you had a, uh, what's been your favourite moment so far? Or um, is there something about uh, your final year that you're really looking forward to as well? Um, honestly, so many moments. So we, yeah, we actually had a lecture with, with Kate Moss um, last year, which was amazing. Um, I love her. Um, and I really connected um, with her actually about one of her, novels that she wrote about caring for her dad um so it was, it was really nice to meet her and um, communicate with that um that was really cool and then also like socially um getting to experience freshers week this year um which i didn't obviously get properly in my first year that was really cool and i work for the student union um so i got really cool opportunity to sort of go behind the scenes and meet chris stark when he came to dj and get a picture with Raxu and that kind of thing um and going into into third year which is really scary um, but I'm really excited to work on my dissertation. We started talking about it and we have to um, submit a dissertation proposal um, in May, just 100 words, really brief. But I'm looking on writing on um, Jane Austen um, and also Bridgerton, um, which is obviously very current um, and yeah, really exciting. Um, so that's the thing I'm probably most excited about. Um, one of my lecturers is really passionate about it and we're really excited to work together on it. So, yeah. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Um, and so this comes to the end of our Being an English and Creative Writing student webinar. I'd just like to remind for those who are watching uh, that we have student ambassadors available to message and contact on Unibuddy. Uh, you can find that through chai.ac.uk forward slash chat. And we also have Facebook applicant groups that our applicants are more than welcome to join start making uh, connections with those on their courses and also in accommodation. And also, I uh, would also just like to say that if you have a question that you'd like to uh, contact us directly here at the University of Chichester, you can email study here at chai.ac.uk or if you have a question about your application, you can contact admissions at chai.ac.uk as well. Thank you very much for watching.